Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dark Arm Duelston, Tekken doing a Counter Fairy deck profile. So, I'm really excited to do this for you guys because this deck is just say no the deck. This deck plays all sorts of amazing counter traps, and it's a really fun deck to be able to play to just normal summon out Bountiful Artemis, set five, and know you have all the answers to the opponent's plays, which is just absolutely amazing. So without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards, like in your name, description, every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, and even getting your request deck profile every single month you're a patron. So without further ado, let's get started straight on into this so first off we're gonna be playing three copies of bountiful artemis which is our main deck monster that we always want to see on the field because each time a counter trap card is activated immediately after it resolves you get to draw a card to replace the counter trap you just activated which is a really awesome effect because if you activate multiple counter traps in a turn this card is not once per turn so every single time you activate a counter trap you get to draw a card after it resolves which is a great effect we then play three copies of Guardian Ariadne. This card is a great three of as well in the deck because it has a great pendulum effect that apply these effects that you don't have to pay life points to activate counter traps and you don't have to discard cards to activate counter traps either, which is a pretty good effect to be able to use on this card that basically all of your solemn cards say, hey, you can activate us for free which is really cool. I then play a single copy of Scholar of the Sky because this card can get absolutely massive because each time a counter trap is activated, immediately after it resolves, this card gains 500 attack. And if it does, and the Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field, you get to add a counter trap with a different name from your graveyard to your hand, letting you roll through multiple counter traps in this deck after you activate one, which is really cool. This card is also not once per turn, so you have Sanctuary on the Sky on the field every Every time you activate a counter trap, you're going to get to add another one from deck to hand. I then play a single copy of Sage of the Sky. Sage of the Sky is a really good one of as well because each time a counter trap card is activated, immediately after it resolves, you get to gain a thousand life points. And if you end the Sanctuary in the Skies on the field, you get to destroy a card that your opponent controls, which is a great effect just to be able to pop an additional card that your opponent has after stopping one of their plays. Gaining a thousand life points is really good as well because it can put your opponent out of range from OTKing you, which is a great effect, which is why I played this card as a one up. I then play a single copy of Barrier Statue of the Heavens. This card is a good one of as well to summon off of ties of the brethren because it makes it so neither player can special summon any monsters except for light monsters which is a great effect because that's pretty much all we're playing anyways is light monsters and depending on the matchup this card can be really hard for your opponent to get past especially when you play so many counter traps in the deck I then play a single copy of the Sacred Arc Lord Air Knight Parashap. This card is a really awesome card to be able to summon off your copy of Rebirth of Parashap. And it's just a really good boss monster overall in the deck to play as one of. It also has the ability that if you activate a counter trap card, or if you negate the activation of a spell or trap card or monster effect, except during the damage step, you can manage two fairy monsters from your hand, field, or grave, and then special summon this card from your grave or your hand. And if this card attacks, attacks a defense mission monster, it inflicts piercing damage, and when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can add a pair of shaft card or a counter trap from your deck to your hand, which is a really good effect. When you get this card on the field, usually it's GG for the opponent, which is really cool about this card. Hard. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of Double or Nothing so that we can OTK while stopping all of our opponent's plays. And with the amount of counter traps that we play in this deck, it's going to be super easy to go in for game. Now this card is really awesome in the deck because all you have to do is make Utopia double, detach a material from Utopia double, add this card from deck to hand, make a copy of Utopia on top of that Utopia double, it'll come out at 5,000 attack points, attack a new opponent's monster that has 2,000 or less attack points as long as they have 8,000 life points, and then detach a material to negate the attack. Drop double or nothing, attack again into that attack position monster to be able to go in for 10,000 attack points. And if it has 2,000 or less attack points, when you attack into it, you're going to do over 8,000 damage to the opponent in one swing, essentially OTKing your opponent, while also protecting your plays with all of your counter traps. I then play three copies of Ties of the Brethren. Ties of the Brethren is a great card in the deck because you pay 2,000 life points and target a level four lower monster that you control. And for the rest of the turn, after this card resolves, you can't special summon monsters. Also, you get to special summon out two monsters from your deck with the same type, attribute, and level as that monster, but with different names from each other. And that monster that you targeted with this card. 
which is a really awesome effect, but you cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card. This card is really, really good in the deck to be able to use to basically get out three fairies out on your side of the field by just normal summoning one of them and paying 2,000 life points. So this card is a definite three of in this build to be able to summon out all sorts of cards in the deck, which is why I play so many level, uh, so many level four one ofs in this deck. I then play three copies of this Sanctum of Parashaft. This card is a really good card that counts as the uh, Sanctuary in the Sky and while it's on the field or in the graveyard. And Fairy Monsters on the field gain an additional 300 attack and defense. And said spells and traps cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects, basically protecting them from Harpy's Feather Duster, which is really good. This card is absolutely amazing in the deck because it also gives some of your fairies bonus effects, which is really cool. And then once per turn, you can target a total number of three Fairy Monsters and or Counter Traps with different names in your graveyard and place them on top of your deck in any order, basically being able to recycle your cards and use them all over again. I then play three copies of Pot of Extravagance because we really don't go into the extra deck all that much unless we see our opponent with a monster on the field that we know we can OTK with the Utopia Double, or we summon it off for a copy of Rebirth of Parashaft. So we have plenty of targets in the extra deck anyway, so this card is really good to help us dig for an additional two cards by banishing six from our extra deck. So that's it for the um, spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. So for the traps, we're going to be playing a lot of traps in this deck, and we're going to be starting off with two copies of Drastic Drop-Off. Drastic Drop-Off is a really good two of that when your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, including drawing, they must discard one of those cards, which is a pretty good effect to be able to use to be able to just rip a card out of the opponent's hand. We then play three copies of Solemn Judgment, which is really a great counter trap, one of the best counter traps ever created. And when a monster would be summoned or spell trap cards activated, you pay half your life points, negate the summon or activation, and if you do, destroy that card. As long as you have at least a life point, you always have half to pay to be able to go in with this card. As long as you have two life points, you can always have half to pay to be able to stop the opponent. With cards like Guardian Ariadne, you're not going to have to pay life points at all to stop the opponent with this card. We then play three copies of Solemn Strike. Solemn Strike is a great three of as well, because this card comes in extremely handy that when a monster would be special summon or a monster effect is activated, you pay 1500 life points to negate the summon or activation if you do destroy that card, which is a awesome effect to be able to stop your opponent's summons. We then play three copies of Solemn Morning. We got to play three of each in this deck because they're just too good not to play. But Solemn Morning is a great card as well, because when a monster would be summoned or when a spell or trap card or effect monsters effect is activated that includes an effect that special time is a monster you pay 2000 life points to negate the summon or activation and destroy that card which is a really cool effect on this card that basically you have nine ways to stop the opponent from summoning or activating monster effects which is really really cool we then play three copies of draco utopian aura which is why i actually wanted to update this deck this card is absolutely insane out of power of the elements and it's just such a good card because when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field you negate the activation if you do destroy that card then you can apply this effect that you get to banish a monster from your hand and if you do you get to special summon the monster that was destroyed and sent to the graveyard by this effect but its effects are negated which is a pretty good effect to be able to just take that monster away from the opponent by just banishing a monster from your hand that you might not normally normal summon to your side of the field for example if you draw into two copies of bountiful artemis you might not need the second copy so you can get rid of it to be able to use this card and take a really powerful boss monster that your opponent might have. I then play three copies of Force Back. I really like three copies of Force Back in this deck because you negate the normal summon or flip summon of a monster and return it to the owner's hand, which is a really awesome effect in this deck to be able to use with all of your other Solemn cards to prevent special summons. This card prevents the normal summon, which is really, really cool. I then play three copies of Rebirth of Parashaft. This card is a really insane card that when a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated, you reveal a counter trap in your hand, discard a card, pay a thousand life points negate the activation if you do shuffle that card into the deck then you can special summon a parashaft monster from your deck or extra deck which is really cool because we have a bunch of different monsters that we can actually summon off this card getting the negate is really easy on this card and with cards like guardian ariadne you're not going to have to pay for any of the cost for this card negate a card effect shuffle it into the deck and then summon a copy of a parashaft monster that you want from your extra deck or your main deck which is a crazy crazy powerful effect so that's it for the main deck guys let's get into the extra deck 
So for the extra deck, we're going to be playing two copies of Celestial Night Lord Parashaft. I'm just playing two copies of this card because I only really feel like you need two copies of this card in this build. It's a really good card to summon off your copy of Rebirth, but I only see myself summoning it every so often. If I banish it with my copy of Extravagance, that's totally fine. But the reason I'm actually playing this card is because you discard a card to add a Sanctuary in the Sky or one card that specifically lists the Sanctuary in the Sky in its text from your deck to your hand. Or if Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field, you get a Fairy Monster that in instead, which is a pretty good effect to be able to get a search. But if I already had the copy of Sanctum, I'm not really worried about this card at all. I then play three copies of the Avenging Knight Parashap. Now this is a card that I summon all the time in this deck. This card is absolutely broken in the deck. And once per turn, you can change the battle position of one monster that your opponent controls. And then during battle between this card attack and card, an opponent's monster you do piercing damage, which is really good. This card is really cool to be able to summon off your copy of your rebirth. And it's just a really cool ball boss monster overall. We then play three copies of Utopia Double. Utopia Double is a really cool card overall in the deck. To be able to summon this card, detach a material, add double or nothing from deck to hand, then summon one of our three Utopias on top of one of our Utopia Doubles. It'll come out at 5,000 attack points, swing at the opponent, detach a material to negate the attack, and then drop double or nothing to attack into only a monster, not directly, into a monster to be able to go in for 10,000 attack points, which gives the opponent a real surprise with the this effect because we have so many ways to make sure that the attack goes through with all of our counter traps. I then play a two copies of S39 Utopi the Lightning just in case we do banish off of our extravagance our Utopia doubles. This card can come in handy to be able to overlay to go in for a 5,000 attack with monster. And if your opponent's playing a lot of back row, you can use this card to go in for an Armides like attack where you're basically just going to swing and your opponent can't activate any cards with a 5,000 attack point monster. For the last two monsters in the extract, I'm playing two copies of Evil Sworn Exiton Knight. I didn't want to play Zeus in the extract, so I ended up playing Evil Sworn Exiton Knight instead. This card is just a really good board wipe, which is why I play it as a two of in this particular build. So that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. It's a super fun deck. You pretty much just say no to the opponent all the time, which is really, really fun to be able to do. It's a really insane deck with just how consistent it is, and it's just really fun because you can pretty much throw any counter trap you want into this deck. So that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.